All right, so today I want to talk with you guys about lighting. More specifically, I want to discuss photosynthesis and the way that different light frequencies or colors affect the growth of the plant. So let's get right in. Photosynthesis is where a plant takes energy from light and converts it into chemical energy, turning it into glucose and oxygen for itself to thrive and survive on. The word photosynthesis literally translates to synthesize light. I think about it like photovolactics, which is where we take energy from the sun and turn it into electrical energy through a solar panel only in the case of photosynthesis we're using a leaf as our solar panel and we're not creating electrical energy we're creating food for the plant so that's photosynthesis in a nutshell but in order for it to work the plant relies heavily on chlorophyll these little pigments in the leaf and chlorophyll absorbs two light waves the best blue and red light waves it actually reflects green light waves. This is why plants are green to us. It's reflecting the green light coming in from whatever the source is instead of absorbing it. So let's recap that real quick. This is a lot of information to kind of cram into one little sentence. Plants, through photosynthesis, convert energy from light into glucose and oxygen. They rely on chlorophyll to do this. Chlorophyll absorbs blue light and red light best. So that's where we're at. We know blue light's very important and we know red light's very important. But what about when do we use them, how much, and all the other lights on the spectrum like uh, UV light and infrared light? How does that affect the plants too? Well, as far as blue light and red light go, blue light's great for when you're starting your plants, when they're developing their leaves and their initial growth. Because blue light, if you keep it on the plant the entire time, it'll come out very bushy and small, but have a lot of leaves. I swear red light, if you leave red light on a plant the entire time, it'll be very lanky and tall and long and probably not have a lot of vegetative growth. So the key here is to use blue light at the beginning to build that vegetative growth up and then switch to red light whenever it starts fruiting. Now, as far as all of the other light on the spectrum, I included this list right here and linked it up in the description box below. It's very handy, especially if you're trying to do like a DIY um, using like household LEDs instead of doing a, a full spectrum grow light. So this way you can optimize the growth and know when to switch out your light bulbs. If you are in the market for like a full spectrum, grow light, then they're actually going to contain uh, most all of these frequencies in, in different variations. So you can check out this video right here uh, to get more information when you're buying your grow lights about what to look for. I can go over your PPFD map, which is the other end of the spectrum. In this video, we're talking about color and wavelength and how that is going to affect your plant. But the PPFD is the intensity of light. And the other video I did here discusses a lot more about how that's going to affect your plant. So make sure you watch that in correlation. So I recommend playing around with your blue and your red lights, see what works best for you. Um, following this general formula of blue for early growth and red for your vegetative states, report back in the comments down below and let me know how it goes for you. I hope this was helpful. I know it was very sciencey. We had a little bit of a biology class, but that's all right. If you are growing inside or growing in a greenhouse using artificial lighting, all this information is crucial to know. So make sure you also check out this video and my hydroponic 101 playlist and Let's grow together.